Aha! Mr. Crispin here once again and welcome to my workshop. In today's video I will be progressing with the steam locomotive. Firstly, for anybody new to the project, this is what I'm building. It's a B1 spring box in 5 inch gauge and when it's finished it should look something like that. Now today's project is to make the pieces that attach to the chassis roughly here and come down to support the top of the slide bars. Here is a photo of a full size one and you can see here's the slide bars and here is the bracket I'm talking about. Now just to show you this in a bit closer detail, a friend of mine, uh, Spring Chicken, took this photo for me at a local uh, preservation railway and what can be seen there is the piece in question. So you can see it supports the top of the slide bar, it mounts to the chassis by means of some bolts and then it sweeps up and over and supports the underneath of the running board. Now various designs on the 5 inch model exist, um, everything from a rather simple version Martin Evans did right through to a um, as close as possible replica to this. I've given it some thought and I've come up with what I'm going to call Mr. Crispin's interpretation of a uh, motion plate, which is the technical term for this bit, and that's what it looks like. So it's going to support the top of the slide bar, it's going to mount to the chassis using that, <coughs> and it will support the running board out here. First of all, I'm going to take my rough pieces of material and do some uh, proprietary roughing out ops on them. So what is going on? Well the first thing to explain is that I'm making this assembly as a back-to-back -back pair. So as you can probably see from this roughing out I've done, I've got one piece here and then the mirror image above it and this just cuts down the number of soldering and machining operations um, required later on. That is that piece and equally the backing strip has been made over twice the length and that's ready to go on there. Now with silver soldering the temptation is always to do some kind of balancing act and then try and position everything maybe using a bit of wire and pokers such that when you solder it it all stays there but unfortunately you come up against physics and as soon as the flux melts and then the solder melts everything starts floating around and you end up in a pickle. So I like to put a bit of effort in ahead of time on silver soldering and what I've done so far is to constrain these objects slightly. So I've made a couple of little pins that fit in those holes and then that drops on over the top and then this means as I solder it it's not going anywhere and it should hold it all nice and square. So coming up next I've decided to profile this shape whilst still in this condition. You could do it at the end for slightly more accurate results but given the term none of this geometry is particularly crucial I'm going to take the easy option and profile it out while it's easy to hold and uh, more rigid and from there I will then look at the next steps which will be how to deal with this elephant's foot arrangement. To do this work I'm putting the machine into horizontal mode such as I can approach everything with the cutter pointing that way and uh, that's pretty straightforward on this machine these two uh, bolts just slacken off and the head slides out. place goes the horizontal protector to stop uh, stuff all the gears are straight down here so uh, it stops the bits going in and all the gears and uh, this now exposes the horizontal spindle with the drawbar at the back
there's not a great deal of material to come off here and so whilst I'm working to the lines I'm just using a bit of oil instead of any uh, flood coolant. To complete the four angled sections of this I'm going to be using two different sizes of V-block just to set the pieces in the vise by means of holding them against the fixed jaw at a given angle. Unfortunately the setting blocks are slightly thicker than the workpiece so to overcome this problem I've just placed a shortish V-block in there and then I'm going to use this to set the angle and use the V-block as the clamping mechanism. Emery cloth on the back of a fire ledge just to give the surfaces a bit of a clean up. For now that concludes work on this piece. So that's all the um, profile milling and the edges sorted out. I'm going to put this to one side and I'm now going to turn my attention to this um, elephant's foot feature. So I'm going to return to the milling machine and I'm going to do a bit of milling to create something that can be used for that. To make these sections I am going to be milling a profile that looks like this into this block. So from above you'll see that profile and it will be milled all the way up and down. Now to do that I have swiveled the vise through 90, I have got the flood coolant running and I've also swapped to a carbide cutter that has a nose radius on the corner uh, such that the finished article will have a nice fillet radius in that join there. Now um, I will get going shortly and probably position the camera around the back. Using my brother's toothbrush I have prepared the vise for resetting. Now so far what I've done is I've milled the sides of the step square but next up I need an 11 degree angle on both of them. Based on experience with this vise if I use some degree of magnification I can set it to within about 0.1 of a degree just using the protractor and given that these features are what you could call visual that would be perfectly adequate so no uh, fancy angle setting methods today I'm just going to use the protractor and then I'll proceed much in the same way milling up and down to do the two angles 11 degrees one way 11 degrees the other so let's do that now let's cut a clearance okay now <clears throat> where's it gone here we are Okay, that's the first 11 degree angle. Something is wrong. There's too much of an angle and by the time I finish this at 11 degrees both sides I'm going to be left with a, a point well beyond what I was um, aiming for. So I'm going to go and uh, recheck the dimensions. It's exactly as I thought. It turns out uh, 7 degrees would be more appropriate. I've just re-trigonometried the numbers are on my final sketch and uh, 7 degrees is what I'm going to aim for. So I shall um, repeat that little setting procedure. I am now putting in the centre slot. In the words of Inspector Cluzo, now we are getting somewhere. What you can see here is all the bits made so far and I'm quickly approaching the silver soldering point. Now after machining that slot I went ahead and put some holes in and then sawed it all apart. Now some of you may have noticed that the slot down the middle 
doesn't look perfectly symmetrical. One side's thicker than the other. Something strange is going on. Well, remember back to the fact that somehow I need to create a one and a half degree angle uh, out of square. And that's how I've chosen to do it. When I came to machine this slot, I, instead of returning the vice to zero, put it to one and a half degrees off. So that gave me the angle. And now, once it all goes together and I machine this to finish size, I should have a parallel width here because um slot will be setting it to a one and a half degree angle. These are of course going on here like this, uh, one on either end. And then once I've silver soldered them, I'll machine it all up, cut it down the middle and that will give me my two bits. Now, final thing to say is that before I silver solder this, I'm going to do one more little pinning exercise because with these pieces sort of hovering on the side walls when I heat it up there's a good chance they could either drop off or move so I'm going to pin them much like I have done with this. It's now the next day and I'm trying out lemon juice as a pickling solution. I used to use carb battery acid diluted 10 to 1 with water but this is a all round friendlier option. Uh, not my neatest soldering but it looks like it has worked. I was a bit concerned um, that the end nearest me was getting too hot. Uh, it took quite a while to warm the whole piece up, longer than I was planning, and as a result, by the time I got to soldering this end, the flux looked like it was uh, about done. But fortunately that's come out okay. So I'm going to give this a uh, clean up with a file now, and then I'll proceed for the final machining steps. So it's had a bit of a file up and I've also put it back in the milling machine and taken a bit off the top and I've done this face here. I've then taken it to the surface table and measured different dimensions such as the relationship of these holes to the base and uh, other bits and pieces and I'm now going to put it in the vise this way around so that I can take this side to finish width, take the top to the finish height and then turn the vise through different angles to get to all my uh, other features.
I've deburred most of the surfaces now and I'm just taking these um, whatever you want to call them down to size Right, well that is where I'm going to leave it today. This one is pretty much finished and uh, I will carry on and um, complete the work on these before carrying on in the next video where I will be cutting this in half, finishing off the bits and pieces and then I'm going to do a mock assembly on the chassis, uh, drill through and get everything fitted up. So that's all for today. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.